you seen from a guy like Paris over the last year and how he's been in this effort? Uh, Paris has improved tremendously because, you know, he is uh, really a versatile kid. We can play him inside. We can play him outside. Um, you know, he can be strong at the point. Uh, and we can put him a little bit at the edge, play over the tight end, play the six technique. Um, he's, a, he's a guy we can plug in at any spot across the front, uh, which is uh, something that we work to get to all summer. You said before camp that you envisioned being able to play six guys at those two inside spots. Do you right. the same way? Still feel the same way. You know, we got to get them all in shape. They, they don't know. I mean, uh, you know, somebody can get nicked here. Somebody can have COVID there. It, you just don't know. So you got to always be ready. What is the biggest advantage to having a legit rotation that you feel good about? Uh, fresh bodies. You know, I mean, if you got a guy who's playing offensive line and he's going every rep, you know, he's feeling it. And you got a guy who's playing defensive line and he's rotating every four plays, you know, he's feeling good about himself, especially if they're having success. How do you do that against that uh, speed up offense? <laughs> well, you substitute when they substitute. You know, I mean, we don't put ourselves in a position that, you know, if it's a long drive, you know, 10 play drive, we got to pick our spots. Or when, uh, you know, the play into our sideline, we might be able to get someone in to substitute then. But mostly when they substitute, we substitute. Johnny said the other day, he was pretty adamant about it, that he's very committed to playing a lot of players. Mm -hmm. He said he would even take some mistakes along the way. Um, in order to do that. Is that a, kind of an ex acceptable trade-off? Uh, it is, especially if they're in shape, if they're fundamentally sound, and they're, they're committed to, to the, the process, you know, and you got to trust it. And, uh, uh, and that's the biggest thing we work towards. I mean, we work our guys hard, you know. We push them hard. We're pushing sleds and pushing on people all the time. And, uh, and uh, you know, when you Beating on big guys like that all the time, they have a tendency to want to spit the bit out. But these guys have stayed the course because they know that the next guy up. What have you seen out of Isaiah Johnson so far? Uh, you know, a guy who's really strong in his upper body, you know, has the ability to use his hands and, and uh, you know, make some things happen. Um, he's a young player. And uh, like I say, we'll be patient with the young players. But the things that they control, we will be demanding of. And that's great attitude, great effort, and then uh, knowing what to do when they get out there. Are he and Jacob, are they both playing the nose tackle? Uh, Jacob and Isaiah. All of our guys are interchangeable because if they move a tight end or something, this guy could be a three, this guy could be a shade. Okay. So um, you have to know both. When you go out and recruit, what are specific traits that you look for? Well, when I was at Washington Redskins, I had a nose guard. He was 6'8", 310 pounds. And he had like 80-inch arms. That's what I'd love to have, but, you know, it's hard to find. <laughs> you know, I want him in the backfield on the snap of the ball. Um, but when you when you play with leverage, you know, you can you can win the leverage game and you can play on the other side of the line. I mean, you watch a guy like an Aaron Donald. I mean, he's not a big guy. He's a 6'2 guy, but he brings the energy. And, uh, you know, and you can knock people back. When you're knocking people back, you're playing on their side of the line. What's the biggest transition for the younger guys, especially in the first few days of practice? I think the uh, physicality of the game and the speed of the game, things happen a lot faster. And uh, and you, you're physical from start to finish. And uh, just learning to be a good finisher of the play. Would you say that Keon is on track to be ready to go for week one based on the workload you guys have given him? Well, he's certainly putting in the work with us. He's putting in the work, you know, in the weight room. Uh, uh, I don't have any doubt that he won't be ready to go. So. How does he look out there? Does he, look like yeah. his... he looks like Keon. Yeah, yeah. But we got to be smart about it, too. So. What, what's going to change with the instruction of Phil Well, I hope we make it more tackles for losses and, you know, plays on the other side of the line. And what's going to change? Nothing changed. We still want guys to play as fast, as physical, and be as fundamentally sound. Is there going to be some live tackling tomorrow, as far as you know? Uh, I would imagine it would be, but, you know. A lot of the guys from the media day talked about saying you picked you up on the wall and you shot. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you, how do you get across what Arizona football means to kids that probably never saw you play and only saw your highlights? Well, I, I think, like anything else, you know, when you talk about Arizona football, it's all about pride. And pride, being poised under tough conditions. And, um, and, and it put the team first, you know. And so uh, these same philosophies that I grew up with and played with, uh, they apply today with just different words, you know. Um, and, you know, we come out and we expect to win. And, and if you expect to win, then you got to be fundamentally sound. You got to have your shit together and be ready to go.